Hi there, welcome to part three of Changing the Subject. Um, this time we're going to look at um, something which is a little bit more awkward, a little bit more complicated that, that you need to, to factorise, alright? So if you're not quite sure about factorising, then please do look at one of the other videos on factorising. But if I am changing the subject by factorising, then of course you need to be able to factorise, common sense really. So let's have a look in terms of why we might need to do that. So it tends to be when a subject appears more than once, alright? So if you're trying to factorise something, then likely that you need to have that 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 value you're factorising with appearing more than once within the, the the equation or formula that you've currently got. All right. So let's have a look. So um, make C the subject. So hopefully you can see from there. I've got B plus two C equals A C. So I've got C in two different places. All right. So this is where I, I'm going to try and get them together, um, and then ultimately then factorise it or to isolate it. Okay. So before I kind of begin, I've got to rearrange this to get. My, my 2C and my AC together on the same side, all right? That's a really the first important step, okay? So put all the terms of C in on one side and everything else on the side. So you can choose which one to do. Um, so it's up to you whether or not you leave a B on the left-hand side and, or, and move to the right, or the 2C and the AC on the right-hand side and to the left. It's your kind of choice, um, but we're going to move, move the one on the left-hand side, the 2C to the right-hand side, okay? So it, again, Think about rearranging the formula, I always do the inverse. So if it's a plus 2c on the left, then I need to take it away on, on, on the right. Okay, and hopefully you can see that from there. That the 2c, which is originally here, has now moved over here and has become a minus. So for ac minus 2c. Alright. Right now, because I've got my c's together on one side, this is where I look to factorize it. Right? So I have c, which is common in both these two things. Okay, so I'm going to put a c outside the bracket. And then C, what I need to times on the inside. Well, C times A, so that gives me the AC there. And then if I divide this by the C, then I'm just left with the minus 2, hence the minus 2 there. So I've got C bracket A minus 2, and that is a factorised on, on this right-hand side, okay? But remember, we are trying to isolate C. So now I have C times something. Um, well, the inverse of times is a divide. So if I'm going to do C times something, then I need whatever this something is, I need this B needs to divide by it, okay? So divide by A minus 2, and then you can see it's now B divided by that bracket A minus 2 is equal to C. And you see I've got rid of the bracket. You could leave it, and it wouldn't make, it wouldn't make an awful lot of difference. Um, but essentially, because we're finished, we can get rid of it. All right, so B over A minus 2 equals C. So I've identified C, and I've made that the subject, okay? So done. Right, what about this one then? So I'll make it extra subject. So, so hopefully you can see, again, an awful lot kind of going on, a lot more complicated. I've got numbers on the left and on the right hand side. I've got different letters all over the place, but I am focusing <coughs> on the X, okay? So to get X together, um, again, you've got a choice really. Um, but what you've got to try and do is try and get anything involving X on one side, anything not involving X on, on the other side, all right? So how are we going to do this? Well, it suggests on here, doesn't really say, so let's see what it does. Um, a bit of rearrangement, so I'll just explain what's happened here. So the minus 7 has gone to the other side and become plus, all right? So I've added the 7 to this side. And then what they've done is taken the 3x and moved it to this side and become a minus, all right? So both inverse operations. And then you can see that I've got x's, just x's on this side, all right, in two terms. And then everything that does not involve an x on the left-hand side. Right, so that's what we're trying to get to. It says over here, it does say over here, put all the terms of x on one side and everything else on the other side. All right, and that's what we've done here. Okay, so that should be now similar to what we had over here. So the process should now be the same at this point. So we've got x in both of these two things. So we look to factorize it so that x goes on the outside of the bracket. We've got a z left, there's the z, and then we've got minus 3x, so there's the minus 3. And that's going to give a minus 3x. Okay, so factorised. And of course, that stays exactly as it is, as it was. And then, like I did before, whatever we have on the left-hand side, because these two are times together, we do the inverse of that. So it's going to be y plus 7 divided by whatever this bracket is here, z minus 3. Okay, so there we go. y plus 7 divided by z minus 3 is equal to x. And again, x is being isolated. All right. Now, in each of these cases, you'll notice that I've left my unknown, no, I, what, when I'm trying to make the subject on the right-hand side, but it, it doesn't matter if you leave it on the left-hand side or right-hand side, it really doesn't. 
whichever is going to be easiest for you and do obviously dependent on that kind of question all right I would suggest that which is ever is easiest for you to, to, to manipulate so all right so if you've got so let's take the example at the bottom here when I said X is the subject well if I've already got my X on the left hand side and it starts off 3x plus 4 then I might decide to keep my X on the left hand side but of course it's your choice it makes no difference as long as you make X the subject in the cases okay well thanks for listening